Hey everybody, welcome to the Jaden Stitches Show. A little while ago, we made the Autumn Primrose Beanie. Love this hat. We used a self-striping yarn, and mine's in acrylic, but of course I told you you can use cotton or wool, whatever you like. Well, I love a matching set, so we had to make the Autumn Primrose Fingerless Gloves to go along with it, and I used up the rest of the ball of yarn I used for this hat. So you don't need a whole lot of yarn to make a pair of fingerless gloves, and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to make them for an adult pair of hands, but I'm also going to give you directions to size them down for children's hands if you want to do that too. Also, the thumb is optional, so you can add a little bit more to the thumb if you want, or you can leave it open. This is entirely up to you. Not everybody uses their fingerless gloves the same way. You might want a little more finger and thumb movement, or a little less, uh, but I'm going to take you through all that in the tutorial. So, let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, we'll head on over to the craft table, and we will stitch up a pair of fingerless gloves together. In order to make our Autumn Primrose fingerless gloves, you want approximately 75 grams or around 100 yards of a size 4 medium weight yarn. I'm using acrylic, but you can use cotton or wool or whatever you like for this project. You want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, a pen and some paper to make some notes. The hook we're using today is a 5.5 millimeter, also known as an I or a 9 in the US, a size 5 in the UK. And if you enjoy our channel and all the videos we make here, consider supporting our show by becoming a member. You can click the join button or the link in the description box down below for more information on becoming an InStitches family member. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. Both of our gloves are identical, meaning you don't have to worry about a left or a right, but you will want to make some notes as we go so that you can ensure that your second glove looks exactly like your first one does. This primrose pattern can be worked over any multiple of three in the round. So a chain length, it's any multiple of three since we're working around and around and around in a circle. We want to begin by making a slip knot. And you want to chain a length that will fit over top of your wrist when both ends are held together. Now I've already made one glove, so I know for me that that is 24 chains. So I'm going to start with 24 chains. I recommend you do two. I have a medium sized hand for an adult. If you're making something that's smaller for a child, then try three chains less, so 21. If you're making it for a hand that's a little bit bigger than mine, start with three chains more, or 27. I've chained a length of 24. Now I know I need 24 chains because that's how many I made when I made my first glove, and I know that that works for me. So once you have a chain number that works for you, you want to make sure you write it down on your notepad. How do you know it's enough? Well, take the front and the back. You can put the, your hook through that first chain you made and just try it on. If it goes over top of your hand and it's just a little on the tight side, that's perfect. You don't want it to be loose because it is going to loosen up or stretch out on you a little bit, but you don't want it to be too tight that you can't get it on. So make sure you can get it on over top of your hand with a little bit of stretch, but not too much. And once you've got the, the right number of chains, like I said, make sure you write it down. It can be any number, but it has to be a multiple of three in order for the pattern to work. Make sure you have not twisted your foundation chain row. And we're going to join with a slip stitch to the first chain we made. We're going to begin with the pico stitch, which is the first part of the primrose stitch in total. We're going to chain one. We're going to single crochet into the same stitches joining, and if you pull up you see that little space there. So single crochet into the same stitch that you joined in to make the ring. Chain two, and work another single crochet into that same place. So that's a little pico. You're going to skip two chains, find the third, and work a single crochet, chain two, single crochet into it. Now. I'm sort of working over my little short tail. Don't worry about it. If you can't, you can just end up weaving that in later on. And a lot of people ask, should I use the top loop of my chain or the bottom loop? I say it doesn't matter. You just want to be consistent. So if you start by using the bottom one, use it all the way around. If you start by using the top, use it all the way around. Skip two chains, find the third, and work single crochet, chain two, single crochet into it. And that's all you're going to do all the way around. And I'll catch up with you at the beginning. We 
When you get back round to the beginning, you should have two chains left that you're going to skip. You're going to join your row with a slip stitch to the first single crochet you made. Now, how many motifs are you supposed to have in your row? It's very easy to figure out. I had 24 foundation chains. I divide 24 by three, that gives me eight. So I should have eight little picots or eight little motifs all the way around. So whatever your foundation chain row was, you know it had to be a multiple of three. So take that number, divide it by three, and the number you have left is the number of motifs you have and should have in every row going forward, with the exception of the thumb row, but don't worry, we'll get to that when we get there. Once you finish a pico row, you want to slip stitch into the chain two space so that you can begin a shell row, which is the row two part of the primrose pattern, always in that chain two space. So you want to start a shell in that chain two space. The shell row begins with a chain three, that counts as a double crochet. You work two more double crochet into that chain two space. So you're working a shell directly into the middle of a pico motif. Find the next chain two space and work three double crochet into it. So a shell is three double crochet. The chain three at the beginning of the row counts as a double crochet. So keep that in mind when you're making your first shell in every row. And every single shell or three double crochet is built into the chain two space of the pico from the row before. So they're always directly on top of each other. And you're just going to work three double crochet or a shell into each pico or the chain two space of each motif all the way around. So you'll have eight shells or that number, the same number of shells as you have pico motifs at the end of row two. Once you've finished your last shell in the top of your last pico of the row before, find the top of the chain three that you began the row with, slip your hook in there any way you can, and join with a slip stitch. So that's rows one and two of the pico stitch. That's what makes up the pico stitch, or I should say the primrose stitch, a little row of pico and a little row of shells. And you repeat pico shell, pico shell, and that's give, that gives you the primrose stitch. So that's the whole primrose stitch. We're now just going to keep repeating those two little rows as we go up. Every pico stitch or row one of the pattern starts in the middle of a shell. So you want to slip stitch into the next double crochet, which would be the middle stitch of the shell, and then begin the pico row. So chain one, single crochet, into that same stitch, chain two, and single crochet into the same stitch. So single crochet, chain two, single crochet, all worked into the same stitch. That gives you a pico. You can skip two stitches and find the third, or just look at your shell and find the middle stitch, and that's the stitch you work the next pico into. Single crochet, chain two, single crochet. You will still have the same number of picots in this row as you had shells in the row before because you're working your picots directly into the center of each shell, just as every shell is worked directly into the center of each pico. Repeat that all the way around and I'll catch up with you. When you get back round to the beginning, remember after you've worked your last pico to find the first single crochet you made in that row and join to it with a slip stitch. Slip stitch into the middle of that chain two space of that pico to begin the next row of shells because every shell needs to be worked into the top of a pico. Every shell row begins with a chain three and then you work two more double crochet into the same chain two space to complete the shell. Now we want to work this pattern for a little while, so repeating rows one and two or pico shell, pico shell for eight rows in total. So we're just starting row four together. I'm going to let you repeat this little primrose stitch until you've gotten to the end of row eight and that will be a shell row. So your last row or row eight will be a shell row. If you're making these for a child you may only wish to work this pattern until the end of row six. So we're all going to end on a shell row. For children six rows of the primrose stitch pattern. For adults at least eight rows of the primrose stitch pattern. 
I'll show you why when we get there. Once you've worked six rows of the pattern, or eight, so six for children, eight for adults, you want to try on the glove. And it should sort of come to your wrist and should just be about where that dip between your thumb and finger starts. So you want, that's why you want maybe six rows for a child, eight rows for an adult. Depending on your hook and yarn, this could vary for you. That's why I say start with eight for an adult or six for a child. And once you know you've got the right number, write down the number of rows that you're working of the primrose stitch before the thumb row. In order to work the thumb hole row, we're going to slip stitch into the center stitch of that shell. So just like we were going to start another row of the pico stitch, because that's exactly what we're doing. So we're going to begin a row of pico. So this is row nine for me. We're going to create a single crochet in the same place that we joined in. Chain two and single crochet in the same place. Skip two stitches. Work a pico stitch into the center of that shell. And now we're going to skip three stitches and skip three more again. So you're going to skip that next shell, find the middle of the shell after that. That's the stitch we're going to work into next. But before we get there, we want to chain three. So we're creating a hole for our thumb. So we would normally work here, we're going to skip that, we're going to skip over to the next shell. So skip one entire shell, find the middle stitch of the shell after that, and then continue with your pico stitch. So single crochet, chain two, single crochet. Continue your pico stitch all the way around. You'll have a thumb hole now, which we will come back to a little later on. And you'll have one less motif in this row than you would normally. So for me, I would usually have eight picots or eight motifs, but because we're skipping a shell, I'm going to have seven. So you'll have one less in this row. When you get back to the beginning, find that first single crochet, join with a slip stitch, and that's the thumb hole row. So it's the same for kids or adults. You'll have one less motif and now a thumb hole. We're going to continue now with the rest of the mitten and it's just the same pattern. You're going to work a shell row next because we're never going to interrupt the actual primrose stitch. But now we want to put that motif, the missing motif back in. So this is how we work the row after the thumb hole row. Make sure you slip stitch into that chain two space to begin the shell row. Chain three to begin and work two more double crochet into that same chain two space. Work a shell into the next chain two space because there's a motif right next to us there. So three double crochet into that chain two space. And now we come to the thumb hole. So we've chained three across the thumb hole. And what we want to do is find that middle chain. So skip one chain, find the next one. It'll be the middle of those three chains you worked in the row before. And you're going to work a shell into that middle chain. So work a shell into that middle chain, three double crochet. That puts back the missing motif and then we continue as normal. Find the next chain two space and work a shell into it. Continue that shell stitch all the way around and we're back to where we started. At the end of row 10 for an adult or row eight for a child, you should be back to the same number of motifs all the way around that you had down here. So now we're just gonna to continue to use the primrose stitch until the end of the actual mitt. I recommend three more rows in the pattern stitch for children. Try the mitt on. If it's a good size, perfect, you're done. If, it's, if you want it a little longer, add two more rows. It's important though that we end on a pico stitch row because that's what gives this sweet little detail at the top of the glove. For adults, you're going to work five more rows in the pattern stitch. Try it on and see if you like it. If you want it a little longer, two more rows, but be sure to end on a pico stitch. So we're going to continue now. I'm just going to slip stitch into the center of my last shell and I'm going to continue with the pico. So three more rows for children, five more rows for adults, and then give it a try.
Once you've worked five more rows for an adult or three more rows for a child, stop and try it on. So that's nice and tall for me. And once you have decided that it's the right height, you want to stop and take note of how many rows there are after your thumb hole row and then write it down. So I've got my number of chains, the number of rows before my thumb row, the thumb row, which for me equaled row nine, and then the number of rows after the thumb row. So that includes the row of shells where we get back to our correct number of motifs and all the rows after. You can snip your yarn. You don't need very much tail. You just want to fasten off and then take a moment to weave your tail in on the inside of your glove. Before we add our thumb, we just want to complete the bottom edge now of our mitten. So I like to do this to all of my fingerless gloves. People often ask me, why don't you just start with a row of single crochet? Well, we want the end of our glove to look as pretty as the top. So across the top of our glove, we've got that little pico pattern and across the bottom, right now all we have is the uneven underside of our foundation chains. So we want to make that look as tidy as possible and foundation chains can sometimes be a little on the stretchy side. So we also want to give our mitt a little more strength around the bottom. So you can join your yarn anywhere you like along the bottom row. So stick your hook through any one of those foundation chains Join with a slip stitch, chain one and single crochet in the same stitch that you joined in. And however many foundation chains you had, so for me it was 24, you'll have that many single crochet all the way around. So just single crochet in the underside of every single one of those foundation chains all the way around. That will give our mitt a nice bottom finish and a little extra strength too. Once you get back to the beginning, find the single crochet you began the row with and just slip stitch to join. You can fasten off. Again, you don't need very much tail. And then grab your yarn needle and you can just weave that tail in back and forth across the underside of some of those single crochet. The last thing we're gonna do is add the thumb covering. Now this is optional. If you try this on and decide that you don't want the thumb covering, you don't have to add it. Um, it could be a little bulky on a child's glove, so I want you to consider that. If you've got the children hand, uh, child's hand nearby that you're making it for, try it on and decide if you want to add it or not. It will be the same for both children and adults, so like I said, it is optional because it might be a bit bulky on a child's glove. We're going to take our yarn, make a slip knot, put it on our hook, and we're all going to attach our yarn in the middle stitch of that shell at the bottom of our thumb row. So we're gonna join with a slip stitch to the middle stitch of that shell that runs along the bottom of our thumb hole. We're going to begin with the shell pattern. So we're gonna chain three to begin and work two more double crochet into the same stitch. We're going to turn our mitt sideways. We're gonna find the edge. So there's the three chains up here. You're gonna find the side of that stitch. So anywhere you see a side, there's a space here, there's a little piece of a stitch there. Use either one you want, and you're gonna work three double crochet into the same place. So you're working a shell into the side or the corner of your thumb hole. Then you're going to work a shell into the middle chain at the top of your thumb hole. And once you've done that, work a shell into the other corner or the other side of your thumb hole. You'll have four shells in total. We're going to join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three that we began the row with. We should all have four little shell motifs all the way around. We're going to slip stitch into that middle stitch 
that's right into the top of that middle stitch and we're going to do a row of pico so chain one to begin single crochet chain two single crochet all into the same stitch that you just started in and then you're going to work a pico into the top of those other three shells you'll have four picots at the end of the row slip stitch to join to the first single crochet you made and then you can fasten off and weave in your tail Take a moment to weave in all of your ends, make sure they're all in, and then off you go. This is a fully reversible pattern, so you don't have to worry about left and right, but it is important that you make your notes all the way along and keep them in case you want to make another pair down the road. I hope you enjoyed making these Autumn Primrose Fingerless Gloves along with us today, and we will see you soon here on the Jaden Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have a wonderful week, everybody. Bye. Hi, everyone. This is Mom and Stitches. Thank you for watching. Here are a few other videos you might enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe and you can also click the like button and the bell. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.